In this Webflow versus Framer challenge, we're giving our Webflow and Framer Masterclass instructors just two hours to take this design from Figma and turn it into a fully functional web page. In the Webflow corner, we have the founder of Flux Academy, Ran Segal, and representing Framer, Canadian designer, Matt Jumper. Framer or Webflow, which will come out on top? Okay, Ran, you've had your two hours. Can you show us uh, how far you got with your Webflow build? Let's see the, the live website and under the hood as well. So let me show you what I've got. So this is basically the site. I've got most of it done. Um, got the scrolling section, horizontal scroll. I got the gallery with you know the interactions here going on. And I've got the newsletter. I didn't get to do the, the footer. It had kind of like the Figma file had a revealing footer at the end of it. Where was it? Somewhere around here. I didn't get to do this, but I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time trying to make this responsive, uh, which is quite okay. It's not, it's difficult to see here um, how it works and it's not amazing. Uh, the Figma file didn't have an actual design for it to being responsive. So I kind of try to wing it. And this area here, you know, with this inverted corners, uh, it's didn't really work in responsive mode, but I try to do my best. And again, for two hours, I think that's quite all right. Managed to do most of it. Right, over to Framer. Matt, show us how far you got in two hours with your build. All right, so I have this in browser and I'll show you how far I got. Um, so on load, we do have some animations. Um, I have all the layouts done. I spent more time on this on desktop and actually decided um, not to do responsive just because near the end, I had a few minutes left and I just decided I'd rather kind of like get desktop finished. And then, you know, how I'd actually build this is like get desktop finished and then move into the responsive states instead of um, doing responsive and then going back to desktop and like going back and forth. This workflow is just better for me. I know it maybe it made more sense to like try to get as much done as possible. Um, but I just decided to, to do a bit more of the, the fine tuning on desktop. So got the animations done on, on the uh, landing here and then on scroll as well. Got the navigation uh, going away. Got these uh, hover states on the on the links, um, and then as you scroll, this image uh, reveals itself through the mask, and this arrow here um, also scrolls you down. As you get here, I actually have a um, this is using a component, and I have a little bit of a parallaxing effect sideways, which I don't know if I've actually seen before. Um, but instead of a scroll speed, I can get into it later. I'm using some transforms. Um, and yeah, we get the three of these, some sticky elements. And then as you scroll down, get to the gallery. Again, just a little uh, um, intro animation on, on this image here. And then the hover states on these guys, it changes the image. And then if you mouse away, it stays in the last one that you were hovering. Um, and then we have the newsletter, which I did um, the did get this uh, arrow button here. And then at the bottom, we have our reveal footer and the same uh, link covers. I did get the, the rounded corner here. I didn't have enough time at the end to uh, make the body background the same color. So this is bugging me where you over scroll and the, um, that doesn't have the same background color, but I didn't want to cheat and uh, add that after the timer is done. Ran, how about that horizontal scrolling section for you? Is is that the kind of thing that's quite easy to do in Webflow? Yeah, the horizontal scroll is is nothing uh, too complicated in Webflow. Basically, what you do is you create a like a really wide, um, a, a really wide container, a div. Like in this in this case, what we have here, this horizontal scroll wrapper, it's just very very wide, and uh, what happens is that uh, it's basically, it's it's sticky. You want it to, to stick to the top. And it's basically within, uh, you know, it's this section basically clips it. Um, so you can see here overflow clips. That basically means that everything is cut in, you know, the size of the screen, but because it's very long, I create an interaction on this section. You can see that we have a little bit of an interaction going on here while page is scrolling. Basically, as we are scrolling, you can see here, um, as we are scrolling, basically, you can see here, we're basically moving this horizontal scroll um, element. We're just moving it 
as we're in the scrolling. So it's it's pretty straightforward in, in Webflow to create that. This setup is a bit unique because Webflow is great for, uh, um, as, as Ron is going through, like he can do the, the side scroll, the horizontal scrolling. In Framer, um, this is the one thing that I would love for them to do is actually add the um, percentage-based scroll transforms because right now you can only use like fixed values. So I technically could have done that and it would have looked good on desktop, but it's not how I actually would have built it because it's not like properly responsive. So I went down the route of using scroll variants. So on this component here, I have a scroll variant and then it basically I have these trigger points to change um, each of the variant. So inside here I have the first one and also this, this works with uh, groups of three. So I was actually lucky that there was only three um, uh, three cards in that in this layout. So I have the three components here. And basically what I did is actually made them all 80% width of the container that they're in. So that way it's always um, just peaking in the next one. And then this is all in, in, a, in a layout here for this variant one. It's using a layout and it's aligned to the, the start right now or distributed to start. And then the second variable or variant um, it's distributed to the center. So then now it's taking all that content and aligning it to the middle. And then the last one's to the end. Um, so it's just shifting all this content. And then in here, you would have seen in the in the um, uh, time lapse, I was using different colors to actually see how these are kind of set up. But basically, these are um, spacers with uh, viewport heights to basically like trigger the the changes of the variant. And this is all a um, inside of a, a sticky container. So a bit of a, a, a hacky approach to do it, but it, it got the job done nonetheless. Were there any particular parts that were challenging, things that you know slowed you down during your two hours, little tricky parts? I mean, things that are not st super straightforward are how to do these inverted uh, corners because you know you have this one image, um, but then you can't do an invert. Uh, corner here, you can give an invert uh, corner, you can do a round corner for this element here, as you can see here, this one has a round corner. But to create this one, I actually need to bring in this element, like in this case, I brought in like an SVG of this uh, corner that is basically here and here. These So these are, I would call it fake round corners, these are not actually round corners. So this is just a way for me to hack this. And this also happens here. Um, because there's no actually straight, you know, maybe you can do this with custom code, but I just wanted to do things very, very fast. Um, I could have also brought in this whole shape as a mask, but then it wouldn't be responsive. So this is actually the first time that I'm doing something like this. And this was, uh, you know, a little bit of a challenge for me. All the animations, um, these were all really quick and didn't take any, uh, didn't really take any brain work to like figure out how to do it. Cause I've all, I've done these all so many times before. Um, this is just a simple pure effect, uh, cause it's in the top of the hero. So as soon as, uh, this page loads, these, uh, these text elements are just moving down from 120 pixels and then just using the transition, just adding a delay to, uh, each of these by offsetting them 0.2 seconds. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. We have this H1, uh, which is basically acts as a wrapper um, to the actual text inside. And this one has an overflow hidden. So what happens is when we have this text inside and we're animating it or moving it, in this case, let's say I'm moving it. So you see it's being cropped because, you know, the, the div that wraps it is basically act, acting as a mask. So what happens is I'm just animating them one after the other, and that's basically how they mask out. So that's also pretty straightforward. So the same thing um, that I think Ron uh, was uh, getting into, the uh, input here in Framers, so this is behind, and then basically what I did is I have this frame with the arrow inside of it. So I'll hide it so you can see. So I, have, I still have the a button here that says go. And then I basically just put a frame on top of it. I positioned it absolute and then just like gave it a pixel of a uh, buffer on the side. So we still have the focus state and I set the uh, pointer events and the user select to none. I always get these two mixed up. I, I think only one of these was needed to basically make sure that you can't select this item. And it's basically just uh, when you click on this, you're actually clicking on the button below. Um, and with the all the spacing, 
basically I, I took the time to make sure that this uh, line is underneath the name and email. And then when you click on it, we actually get this padding. Um, so the focus state isn't like right to the edge and we still get the border around it. Would you be able to create a rollover state on the arrow given the way it's set up? Yeah, for sure. Because I can always create for this hidden button, I can create an interaction. I can add a hover, a mouse hover interaction and then refer to the arrow in that interaction. So I, I can't create an animation for that. That's pretty easy. I think, you know, I love Webflow and I think this, this demo shows that pretty much you can achieve whatever you want. Even if some things you need to hack and don't come out of the box, you can do it. And I still haven't used any like custom code for this. So I'm pretty happy. I have to say that I love what Matt did when it comes to the interaction. And as I said, there was open place for interpretation. And I love that he created something that looks really, really smooth. So, you know, everything works, whatever you, whatever tool works for you uh, works. I love working with Webflow. And as you can see, I could do something pretty accurate to the design, but both tools could do a great job on this project. You know, Framer is known for its speed. And I thought that, you know, I mean, Ron went for the responsive states and I went for like the more refinement of the desktop. I feel like I would have expected those roles to be reversed where like Framer gets everything done faster and then Webflow is like more of like that that upfront build and then like the speed comes later. Um, so I was, I'm impressed with how fast um, Ron got it done. So uh, cheers to him. Let us know in the comments which tool you think won the day. And if this has inspired you to check out either Framer or Webflow, then you're in the right place. Start with our crash course videos here on the channel and go from there. Until next time, happy designing and developing.